Tonight, our region's relaxed restrictions for COVID vaccines are the talk of Texas. We've shown you sites in Lumberton and Port Arthur and Orange that are now allowing anyone to register and get appointments to receive the shot of hope. Simply put, Texans do not have to prove that they're eligible for the vaccine. Now, some are jumping to the front of the line and they're doing it with permission of local leaders. 12 News reporter Amelia White is keeping tabs tonight. Um, I felt it was very important for me to take advantage of this opportunity to come get the vaccine today. Even if that means driving more than 100 miles all the way from North Houston to Port Arthur. It's a trend that president of the Immunization Partnership, Allison Winky, is keeping a close eye on. We're hearing folks um, from larger cities maybe travel to um, more rural or exurban um, areas um, around their city. Southeast Texas is a hot spot for this kind of behavior. See, Rob Zip had no luck finding a vaccine in Houston, so he tried nearby cities and eventually got an appointment at the CVS in Port Arthur for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I think the ethical thing to do is to, to get the vaccine as soon as you can. Under the state's guidance, Rob is eligible. He falls under Phase 1B, but not everyone who travels to our region meets the state's standards. Health and Human Services reporter Karen Brooks Harper with the Texas Tribune says some young, healthy people are jumping the line. They are seeking out vaccine distributors that have lifted the state's criteria. Some of them are the hustle mentality. Some of them are the me first mentality, but a whole lot of them are just scared to death. But why is this a problem? Harper says if it's someone who is not eligible gets the vaccine, they could be taking away a vaccine from an eligible Texan. But not all qualifying medical conditions are visible. You can't look at someone and tell that they have a heart condition or diabetes or sickle cell disease. So just because eligibility requirements have been waived in some regions, Winky says you should be asking yourself, can I wait my turn? Ethically, we, we really need to make sure that the folks that are, have been identified as most at risk, they get theirs first, and people who are not categorized as high risk yet should wait their turn in line. In Beaumont, Amelia White, 12 News. Very interesting perspective there. Now, if you or a loved one can't make it to one of the mass vac sites, listen up. You may want to book an appointment through Jefferson County's mobile vaccine unit. Tomorrow, a crew is heading to First Baptist Church in Bevel Oaks. On Thursday, they head to First Baptist Church on Highway 124 in Hampshire. And then they'll wrap up next Tuesday and Thursday in Nome and Nederland. Vaccinations are limited and you have to register to get an appointment. Just call 554-6360. And here's a quick look at how things are going at our mass vaccine hubs. The Beaumont Health Department has given out nearly 12,000 shots and Port Arthur is closing in on 10,000. Here's a side by side look at how many shots each jurisdiction received versus how many they've administered. And every location except Newton on our list still has some shots left. So we have less than six hours to go until Governor Abbott's mask mandate ends. Tonight, we want to take a moment to break down some rules. Just because it's lifted doesn't mean that you can demand service without a mask. It's up to each business to decide how they're going to handle it. Attorneys have chimed in as well. And if a business asks you to wear a mask and you refuse, you may be asked to leave. If you don't, this could technically turn into a trespassing situation. Now, businesses large and small have struggled with how to handle this change. Some plan to keep their own mask orders. But will they enforce them? 12 News reporter Jordan James has new perspective tonight. Masks may soon be a thing of the past. Thanks to Governor Abbott lifting the statewide mask mandate, which starts tomorrow. But it all depends on where you go. Like here at Five Under in Beaumont, customers will not be required to wear a mask. No mask and more people. Those are the two major messages coming from the governor. Starting tomorrow, businesses can operate at 100%. And Five Under reps are ready to welcome customers back. They tell me they've added staff and added sanitizer stations and have put out more social distance markers. While customers won't be required to wear a mask, employees will and they will continue to check guests' temperature prior to entering the facility. Where I hope to be 100% from going on forward, it's always necessary to have that in my, uh, in my head. What am I going to do in case? So we will prepare for uh, the change if, it's, if it ever happens. The fingers crossed it never does. Coming up tonight at 10, I'm checking in with a local restaurant and letting you know how they are preparing for tomorrow. Reporting here in Beaumont, Jordan James, 12 News. 
Well, new at six, Beaumont City leaders have requested visitors wear masks at city-run facilities. That means the Civic Center, the Event Center, and the Julie Rogers Theater. During today's council meeting, leaders debated requiring masks, but they ended up swapping the word requiring to recommending. That motion passed unanimously. An alert tonight from our 12 News Storm Trackers about something we're not used to handling here in Southeast Texas. Starting to get dry. Chambers County Judge Jimmy Sylvia has banned outdoor burning in unincorporated areas. He says they've had too many brush fires in the past week. And as you can see, Liberty County has followed suit with its own burn ban. So how dry is it? I want to bring in Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn, who's uh, keeping tabs on this. Like I said, this is uh, kind of unusual for Hadn't us. Hadn't seen this since uh, to the summer of 2011 when we had that epic uh, drought across southeast Texas. As I showed you last week, we're under well, some portions of the area are under an abnormally dry uh, scenario in southeast Texas. Here in Beaumont, we're three inches below normal. And it's not excessive, but uh, I think we'll get some rain coming up this weekend. Hopefully that'll alleviate things. Skies are mostly clear out there right now. Temperatures have fallen into the mid to upper 60s here in the Triangle to the low to mid 70s in the Lakes area. We will continue to fall through the 60s. Should be around 63 by 11 p.m. And hang on to your hat because we expect winds gusting maybe to 30 miles an hour here in Beaumont tomorrow afternoon. More on your Storm Tracker forecast shortly on 12 News. New at 6, the political battle lines are drawn in Beaumont. Things getting emotional during today's city council meeting as leaders debated how to handle a complaint filed against Councilman Mike Getz. Getz says it started when he spoke up to an employee at the Sterling Pruitt Rec Center. He was upset when he saw campaign materials in public view. He maintains he informed the city employee that they were not allowed to have the pamphlets at city buildings. Getz says next thing he knew, there was an item on the council agenda today to discuss all this in executive session. So after an almost two, two hour closed door session, Mayor Becky Ames returned to say that the city council does not believe what happened at the Sterling Pruitt Center rose to the level of a censure and she did not provide any additional details. All of this unfolding, as I mentioned, during what is a really competitive municipal election cycle. Also new at six, help is on the way for folks in Nederland who were worried about huge water bills after the storm. Today, the city council approved an enhanced utility bill adjustment policy. This should help people who had major leaks after the storm. The calculations do get a little tricky, but basically the water portion of people's bills will be adjusted to reflect the cost for one third of the excess water based on a six month average. The Nederland city manager says he's willing to help customers who still have questions. Texas politics now. Governor Greg Abbott wants the Biden administration to provide more funding to the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, known as ICE. During a visit today to El Paso, he announced a new project called Operation Lone Star, which will provide a surge of resources to the border, including 500 National Guard soldiers. He claims since President Biden took office that the cartels have ramped up human trafficking and drug smuggling. I fully expect the Biden administration to stop playing word games and stop it and do their job. Immigration is a federal government responsibility. The governor also demanded that the Biden administration send enough COVID vaccine this week to vaccinate all Border Patrol officers. New developments a day after we told you about the death of a prison guard in Beaumont from COVID. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice will resume in-person visitations for inmates at all units statewide. The change happens Monday, nearly a year after COVID forced them to be canceled. Families can call the unit where their loved one is held to schedule face-to-face -face visits. And a motorcyclist is recovering tonight after crashing into a Port Arthur police officer. State troopers say it happened just before 9 last night near Central Mall. The police car was stopped at the intersection of Regional Drive and Central Mall Drive. Troopers say 77-year-old Donald James of Nederland was speeding when he lost control and hit the police cruiser. James had serious injuries, but the officer wasn't hurt.